Since its origins before the Romans, London has grown and changed continually, with the ruins of old buildings forming the foundations of new ones. Yet today, with new demands for modern offices and buildings which make more effective use of all available space, the rate of this change has increased dramatically and the city is changing as never before. One of the areas undergoing extensive redevelopment lies at the foot of St Paul's. Ludgate Hill is the city's last major bomb site. Besides this, the Victorian Railway Viaduct, which stretches from Holborn Viaduct to Blackfriars Bridge, is now being demolished. In its place, London will have a new underground station and a major office development. This has given the Museum of London professional archaeologists the chance to carry out the largest archaeological project yet seen in the city. This is of great significance, as this area was once the east bank of the fleet, the most famous of London's lost rivers. Long before any excavation begins on site, negotiations take place between the museum and the developers to define what scale of investigation is necessary and how this will fit in with the building programme. This type of consultation encourages the developers to fund the archaeological work required. Without this relationship between archaeologist and developer, a project on this scale could not otherwise take place. We know that the fleet played an important part in London's history, but little is known of the impact of people on the valley before the arrival of the Romans in 43 AD. In Roman times, this area lay beyond the city wall and its defensive ditch. Even so, early work on the project has uncovered the remains of an octagonal temple and the underfloor heating system, or hypercourse, of a large villa-type building opposite the Old Bailey. The remains of a major Roman road have also been discovered beneath Ludgate Hill. Further excavation should reveal whether the bank of the fleet served the Roman as a port. With the decline of Roman Britain around the 5th century, Saxons settled around Westminster. St Bride's Church on the west bank of the fleet was a Saxon foundation. Now, the archaeologists have recovered artefacts like this fragment of a bone comb and this ring from a sword hilt which bears a runic inscription. They have also been uncovering evidence of occupation like this cesspit made from wattle and daub and this timber-lined well, which shows that the Saxons were also using the East Bank close to the old Roman city wall. We know from written sources that after the Norman Conquest, a number of important buildings were erected in this area. Montfichet's Tower, Baynard's Castle and the Fleet Prison, the first prison in England to be built of stone. This was finally destroyed in the 19th century to make way for the railway viaduct, though part of its foundations remained beneath the Victorian brickwork. The land reclamation along the fleet, which began in Roman and Saxon times, continued throughout the medieval period. Many wharves and quays were built on the banks of the river, which became progressively narrower and was eventually diverted to run mills on its eastern bank. In 1278, the Benedictine order, better known as the Black Friars, were granted the land between Ludgate and the Thames to build a monastery, and the city wall extended to enclose their precinct. This survives until 1538, when the dissolution of the monasteries was brought about under Henry VIII. Earlier, archaeological investigation revealed the remains of part of the undercroft or crypt of the monastic church, which had been incorporated into later buildings. 
In 1666, the Great Fire laid waste a huge area of the west of the city. Most of the buildings were destroyed, including Old St Paul's. The devastation left by the fire was countered by an ambitious programme of reconstruction directed by Sir Christopher Wren. This included the building of St Paul's Cathedral and the transformation of the fleet into a canal. Unlike St Paul's, this had only a short life and was eventually bricked over to become the sewer, which now runs beneath Farringdon Street and New Bridge Street. If you look closely, the outline of the Fleet Valley can still be seen preserved in the modern street. Beneath these lies a wealth of archaeological deposits, which have built up over 2,000 years of human occupation. These layers of earth and debris contain information vital to our understanding of London's past, which the museum's archaeologists can retrieve and record scientifically. Each deposit is carefully recorded as it is excavated. Detailed descriptions on specialist recording forms are backed by drawings and photographs. Every feature is planned and its three-dimensional coordinates recorded. The finds discovered in each deposit of an excavation trench can date the particular layers and features within which they were buried. They also fill out our knowledge of the society which produced them. The scale and scope of the excavations means that a great diversity of artefacts from all periods have been discovered, ranging from these tiny Roman tweezers to this medieval pot, which was found complete at the bottom of a well. Each artefact is processed in the museum's finds and conservation laboratories and may eventually be put on display in the galleries. The archaeological deposits themselves contain invaluable environmental evidence. Waterlogged conditions like those in the Fleet Valley preserve organic remains of all types, from sizable finds like this wooden axle from a medieval cart, to valuable samples of animal bones, seeds and pollen. The techniques used to recover this sort of evidence can be very painstaking and time-consuming but they provide vital evidence of diet and the nature of past economies and environments. While the excavation itself is of great importance in that it provides the raw data, it is really only the first stage in a long process of analysing and interpreting that information. The post-excavation work, including specialist reports and computer analysis, usually takes a good deal longer than the actual excavation. But without this analysis and interpretation of its findings, the excavation would have little value. This well, for example, found beneath what was the Ludgate Cellars pub, was partly lined with fragments of dressed and moulded stone. Only careful drawing and expert examination can help piece together the exact type and date of the stained glass window these stones once formed. The staff involved at all stages of the investigation produce a number of reports which are combined in the basic archive report housed in the museum's library. This archive has a vital role to play in providing information for academics, professional archaeologists and for the public, allowing the excavation results to be compared with other sites which have already been dug and those yet to be discovered. The combined process of excavation, interpretation and publication undertaken by the Museum of London ensures that whatever the physical destruction involved in new development the city's past lives on.